Hi, I received this word this morning on 6-15-20, and this word is for the children. Um, the Holy Spirit says it's for his children, and it's called, You Will Be Judged by Your Works. And before I read this word really quick, I just want to say that um, in light of um, some hidden truths being revealed that some of his children, um, I think, are becoming offended and um, possibly angry at him or turning on him. And um, basically what he's really saying in so many words, you know, you have the power of choice um, in the decisions that you make and know this, that whatever decision you decide to make, you are going to be held accountable for the things that you do, say, do, and the decisions that you are making. So I'm encouraging you to think wisely before making these decisions and use righteous judgment and know that if the shoe was on the other foot, you would want someone to stand up for you and speak out for you on your behalf and bring justice to you. And it is not fair that the bride that God um, that his children should want him to only speak good things to them, only side with them, and not help the other half of his children. His bride is his bride, and she is the children to the father, and they have suffered for a long time in the earth and it is time for the bride to reap justice and she has been hollering for a long time for help and finally god is responding to that help and um he's coming to the rescue yeshua is coming to the rescue of his bride and he's standing up for her and defending her and he's speaking out against her oppressors. And I'm just warning you that there may be things that you may hear in the future going forward in the prophetic words that you may not like, but um, no man controls God. And at the end of the day, it's not going to profit you anything to shake your fist at God because God is not your enemy. And your pride may be wounded, but you have to swallow your pride just as his bride had to swallow hers when her ancestors sinned and they caused us to be debased in the earth and become who we are today. Well, um, now it is the Gentiles time to face up to and own up to um, the responsibilities of the sins that they have committed the injustices that they have committed in the earth against um, God's chosen people. And that is the whole purpose of the Battle of Armageddon. He's coming back to do 
war to go to war with the Gentile nations. You guys need to really read and study the book on that battle and see. Um, because the pastors are not talking about this in the churches and he's coming back to do battle with the Gentile nations for how they have wronged his bride, Israel. And I'm sure many of you see the injustices that are going on now with the rioting and everything in the earth. This is not the first time. This thing was going on a couple of years ago. This thing has been going on for years. And because we're at the end, it is time for it to stop. And not only that, it is time for Israel to be delivered out of the hands of her oppressors now. It is time for her to leave all of these countries that she has been scattered in. And it is time for her to be removed out of the midst of her oppressors and go home to Jerusalem, to her land, so that she can have peace. Because as long as we're in the, in the lands of our oppressors, we will not have peace because we are in the enemy's territory. And this is not our territory. Our territory is Jerusalem. That territory is ruled over by an angel, by Michael, the prince of Israel, over Israel, over Jerusalem. He, if you'll read in the missing books in the Apocrypha, and it tells you that um, God spoke to Esdras and he told him that um, it's even in the book of Jubilees too. I think it's in Jubilees, as a matter of fact, where he also states that um, he set demonic spirits up to rule over all the other nations in order to lead them astray because these nations did not want him. And so there are demonic spirits ruling all of the nations except Jerusalem. And as long as we're in these other countries, we are feeling the oppression from these spirits. And these spirits are moving upon mankind, causing them to persecute us. And um, they're making them hate us. Uh, reject us and oppress us it's like the Bible says that we wrestle not against fresh and flesh and blood but against powers and principalities of the air well because all the nations are ruled by demonic entities there's a demon a high-ranking demon ruling each territory and if you'll read in the book of Daniel where Gabriel was coming to bring a message to um, Daniel about a prayer uh, when Israel went into captivity to Babylon the first time and when Gabriel came he said to him that it took him this demon the Prince of Persia this demon was so strong that it held him up fighting for 21 days and he had to call for Michael, the archangel, to come and fight so that he could go and deliver the message. And so these demons are high ranking and then they have orders. They have little demons, they have ranks of demons that they have set up underneath that demon that operates and carries out their plans, their wishes, their orders. And his bride is, it's time for our captivity to end as our ancestors were brought out of Egypt. Now we're going to be brought out of all the nations worldwide that he scattered us. So in 
that taking place, he is airing the Gentiles dirty laundry. And a lot of you are getting angry at him because he's airing your dirty laundry. But you must understand, he aired Israel's. And all these years, we have been the laughing stock of the Gentiles. Well, you reap what you sow, you know. It's your time to drink the bitter cup. And the scripture says that he was going to put the same cup that was in our hand into the Gentiles' hands and that they were going to drink that cup too. And this is the latter days. And so it's your time to drink the cup. And if you'll notice in the book of Revelations, it speaks of he that leadeth into captivity must go into captivity. Well, the Gentiles led us into captivity. And he has already spoken and told me this. And he's even told others through prophetic words that the Gentiles, um, some of you Gentiles are going into captivity as we did and we were slaved, enslaved in these last days that some of you, um, when America is bombed and the other nations come over here and raid, that they're going to take some of you captive and you're going into captivity as we were. And these truths hurt, but these are truths that you can no longer hide from. You can no longer sweep under the carpet. Um, they have to be spoken. They have to be talked about because Jesus said in the last days, God said that all things were going to be revealed. The hidden truths were going to be spoken. The things that the evil is going to be exposed. And if you read in the word, it tells you there's nothing hid, hidden that will not be revealed. Well, it's time to talk about it. Israel, we're, we're ready to go home now. I'm ready to go home. And it's almost time. And I do want to talk about it. And some of you Gentiles, you've already known about this. Your eyes have come open and you've, you've settled it within yourself and you've made things right with God. And I, I applaud those of you that have handled the situation wisely and that have done that. But for those of you that are getting angry, you're handling this matter the wrong way and it could be to the detriment of your own soul if you do not rebuke Satan. You are being tempted of the devil right now. You're going through a trial. Your trial now has begun and God is watching you to see if you're going to do the right thing. If you're going to humble yourself and submit under his hand. And he has got to bring the Gentiles back to themselves. Um, because of a lot of things that have taken you to, to a place that um, he doesn't like. It has caused you to act behavior-wise towards mankind in ways he does not like. And so he has to strip you down. He has to take these, this false um, image that you have gotten um, through bad characteristics from a lot of uh, bad teachings passed down from generations bad habits and he's got to strip this out of you in order to mold and shape you into a true child of God and that includes racism that includes the ugly side of you that you don't want to look at in the mirror every man has good and evil in them we all must face those ugly things of ourselves. I had to face the ugly things of myself. Every race has a dark side and a good side. All of us. 
and it is time for you guys to do the same and not only that if you love your neighbor as the Bible said as you love yourself you must love your neighbor as you love yourself that means humble yourself he's asking you to come to him and repent for these things and just humble yourself there was a subscriber on my channel that she did that and it pleased God so much I wish you guys could have felt the joy that he, I could feel his joy. He was just quickening, I mean, just rumbling in me. I felt the joy. He was excited because she didn't, she just humbled herself and went before him. She wanted to be in good standing. She didn't come with deceit in her heart. She knew what her ancestors had done was wrong and she wasn't trying to make up excuses he said she just she just came in honesty and he delighted in that so much that he gave me a word for her for her and he said he loved her he said he loved her and he told her she will be with him in paradise and that her prayer it was answered and that he was proud of her and that um he would give her the key of david do you see what humility does it chases that it's like david it, it makes you like a person after god's own heart he loves humbleness and humility he despises pride and arrogance. He doesn't like that. And so if you want to get to the heart of God, you have to come like she did. Let her be the example for you guys as to how you should handle this matter. Don't blow up and get angry. Handle it the way she did. She handled it the proper way. And because she did, she reaped life everlasting. Do you see that? Nobody wants to burn in hell. You cannot hurt God in this matter. You can't hurt God. You can't hurt Israel. You will hurt yourself. Because if you turn on him, you will stand in opposition and judgment and you will be cast into the lake of fire. This is think wisely before you make this decision. I ask you to use wisdom and it is okay to be a sore loser in this situation the Gentile nations have been abusers to Israel they have been the enemy they have been the oppressor they have been the user and now it is time for them to become the loser and when you become the loser, that means you are becoming submissive. And God wants you to become the loser so that you can submit under his hand. We became the loser. The loser, in this case, is the winner because the loser submits. Because in this situation, if you're a winner, it's not good. The only way it's going to be good, you'd have to be a loser in this situation. And so that means that um, when I read the word, you'll understand what I mean with the, the options that you have. The loser card is the best card to deal with because it is the card of submission from sins all these sins all these bad acts it is to submit and take a loss and so um i will continue to pray for you guys 
because right now a lot of you have been tempted of the devil. He's taking advantage of your trial that you're going through now, this battle going on within you, within your heart, and he's taking advantage of that, and he's playing on your emotions, and he's trying to stir up hate and rage and bitterness within you against God and your brothers, brethren. But don't do it. I, I encourage you and I just say to you, don't fall for it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. And um, some of you have already gotten angry and you're battling within yourself and thinking about turning on him. And I'm telling you now, don't do it. If you do, it is a decision you will regret for eternity all because you don't want to swallow your pride so I'm going to go ahead and read the word and I hope this really helps someone um, I'm going to continue to pray for you guys because it is hard it is not an easy situation but you must put yourselves in our shoes and it was hard for us to endure all of this abuse over here in America, not to mention those of my people that are scattered in other countries being abused by their leaders. But just America alone, the injustice for my people has been awful. And if you guys were in my shoes, in my people's shoes, you would want God to speak out for you and to defend you. You would want somebody to stand up for you and um, do the same thing for you. So um, in order to be able to handle it better, just put yourselves in our shoes and say to yourself, how would you react? How would you feel? And you know, what would you do? That might help you if you change your perspective on how you're looking at things and that may help you a lot. So anyways, um, the name of this word is you will be judged by your works. You will be set free. You will hear the truth. You are used if you are in the will of God if you are in the will of the enemy, you are used. It is the will of your father to let you hear the truth. You are not in your will when you are in your father's will. You are in the midst of your time of trial. Your enemy is using you to seek his own will. You are your own person. Your enemy is using you to hurt your father. You are your own person. You can choose your own way. You can be who you want. The truth will be in the midst of you when you are in your truth. You are in the truth when you are in the will of the Father. Only you can use the truth to set you free. You can be the enemy or you can be the loser. You can be the user and you can be the abuser. You are what you choose to be. You are the children of light. You will do the works of your father. You do the works of your father. You are in your time of trial. The enemy is using it to use you for his purpose. He is not going to use you unless you allow him to, to. You need to read the word. Use it to put him to flight. You can be what you choose to be. He is evil because he chooses to be. No one will use the excuse of Satan to do the evil works of the devil. You will be judged for your works. Also, I just want to add um, in here um, 
that um, the Holy Spirit wanted it. He asked me, could I make a little snippet um, to put this in here that the loser... Okay, I'm going to read this a little bit again. It says, you can be the enemy or you can be the loser. You can be the user and you can be the abuser. And he says that the user is the abuser. Both of those are bad. And notice it says you can be the user and you can be the abuser. And then when it says you can be the enemy, which is bad, or you can be the loser, there's only one out of all four of these that is good and that's the loser. And he says the loser is the right one. So basically he's saying that the card that you are dealt is the loser card. And that's the card you must portray. Um, it is the card of humility. That is the card that you must portray. And that's all that I have. He wanted me to go back and put that in there. So thanks for watching.